to our virtual Smartman Spotlight. My name is Tammy Minershagen. I'm the Executive Director of Frisco Arts, the city's arts advocacy agency. And we're so glad that you are with us today. At Frisco Arts, we believe that the arts are important to include in the conversation. So we love to highlight people who are doing great things in the arts sector. During this time of social distancing and isolation, we have really seen how the arts can provide comfort and joy and inspiration and definitely you know, break the tyranny of the daily grind. So today we're going to be talking to some wonderful guests that are in the arts sector and doing great things. We have uh, Stephen Ross, who is the public art, uh, sorry, let me get this right, City of Frisco Public Art Administrator. And we also have Swad Betovich from Swad Betovich Photography and also known as the best dressed photographer. So we'll be getting to talk with them today. Uh, the format is I'll start with a few announcements from Frisco Arts uh, and then we'll talk to our presenting sponsor, who is Mike Kurz, uh, and then we'll get to our panel and be done about one o'clock. So we, you can definitely write in your comments. Um, this is Facebook Live. So uh, just write in whatever you can and we'll hope to get to it uh, during the show. And if you have any connection issues, I'm having connection issues. So I'm actually on my phone instead of my computer. So I don't even know where I'm looking right now. <laughs> but, uh, hi, Kathy. Uh, Kathy Selvage says hello. And we're looking forward to um, the show. So um, anyway, you can write in your comments. We're going to record the show. It'll go on to our YouTube channel. So um, in case something goes wrong, you can definitely catch it there. Hi, Leticia. Leticia Herrero says hello. Um, big thanks to Anthony Barocas from stream4.us. He is the live show producer for today. And if you um, want to have your organization do something like this, um, definitely contact Anthony, the man behind the curtain over there. All right, so we're going to get to some announcements. Uh, definitely, you know, the art sector has been hit pretty hard with COVID-19. And uh, one of my favorite quotes is that without art, the crudeness of reality would make the world unbearable, which is by George Bernard Shaw. Uh, and, you know, truly, we need the arts during this time. Uh, and our artists, our arts organizations, and our arts lovers uh, this is something, you know, we want to provide resources for, for all of you. So have on our website um, resources that we've put together. And if you, if you want to just go over to friscoarts.org and click on resources, you can find them there. Um, and if you have something that you want to add to this list, just let us know and we'll put it on there. You can email me at Tammy at friscoarts. Uh, we also have a quarantine. This is for our students uh, who are watching, and uh, we know this is a really tough time for you all too with school being now out for the year, but we wanna encourage you to keep creating during this time. So we're compiling a Quarantine. It's an online and print magazine that will feature student artwork, poetry, photography, recipes, whatever you're doing to creatively document this slice of time in your life. And here are some um, entries that we've already received, which are really incredible. You know, art really helps us release our emotions in a productive way, very cathartic. So if you're interested in contributing towards this, um, you can go to our website under register, or you can also look up Frisco Arts Ambassadors, Youth Ambassadors, and you'll get the info there. Next Tuesday, we have a Ladies Who Launch program where we'll feature two women um, in arts and business. So we've got Crystal Howard, who's the publisher of Community Impact Newspaper, and Dapali Parikh, the owner of Make Expression. We'll be talking to both of them and hope you can join us for the creative conversation that is on Cinco de Mayo at noon on Facebook Live. And the last announcement we've got for you is our Quarantini. Um, we're at this time, you know, outside uh, getting our membership together. And this might be actually our last um, Zoom quarantini. Uh, so we invite you to come. It's an 80s music and trivia night. So uh, you definitely can dig out those muscle shirts, pump up the hair. Uh, it's tomorrow night. We've got uh, some 80s band trivia, name that tune. It's going to be really fun. You can register at friscoarts.org. And this event is sponsored by our wickedly awesome friends at New York Life. So let's get to our presenting sponsor, who is Mike Kurz from Overshare Planning 
and advice. Uh, Mike is a big art supporter and we really appreciate your um, support of this program today. Uh, Mike, we'd love to hear about your heart for the arts and also about your business. Um, so is Mike there? Here he is. Yes. Hey. Hi. <laughs> this is awesome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Yes, I'm love it. crazy today. I'm kind of frazzled, but it's okay. <laughs> appreciate you being here. You bet. It's going to be a great session today for sure. Yes, definitely. Yeah, so I'd um, love to tell you a little bit about Overshare Advice and Planning. Uh, we're a financial planning firm right here in Frisco. Uh, uh, we are a registered investment advisor and we are fiduciaries uh, and we do two things. Um, so for us, we do number one, formalized financial planning. Uh, and what that means is that we love to dig into the details. We look at all aspects of folks' financial lives to make sure that we're making good decisions everywhere uh, and that we can make the most of our money um, and that we can have some dreams come true in the future. Uh, and we love that part of uh, working with clients. And number two, uh, we do very personalized investment management. Um, personalized investment management for us, what that means is we dig a lot into making portfolios unique for each individual client. And very specifically, we're very focused on the tax side. Um, almost every financial decision that you make uh, flows through to your tax return. Uh, and we wanna help folks keep as much of those um, dollars in their pocket uh, and put those to good use as possible. Um, at a high level, we focus typically on, on business owners with big dreams. Uh, we get a lot of excitement with business owners that have uh, big futures and a lot of visions uh, for their business and growing. And we love fun families. We have, we're super extroverted. We like fun families that do cool stuff. And we're really lucky to work with a lot of great clients because um, we have a lot of great conversations. Uh, we have a lot of fun at lunches and dinners. And so that's always something we enjoy. Um, and I know I had sent a few pics over um, to the team to pass along just to share a few things. Um, yeah. That, uh, yeah. And do you guys have those ready? Yes. Tell us about uh, this photo. Um, got it up there? Yeah. 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 So as a part of you know our commitment to our clients, we're super focused on research. In fact, we're we're probably pretty big nerds <laughs> when it comes to to digging <laughs> in. So we go to a lot of meetings. So the Federal Reserve Bank holds. Uh, meetings for uh, advisors and research folks. And this is um, Ollie Rain. So Ollie is the head of the uh, bank uh, Finland. So folks um, come from all over the world right here in Dallas to speak to advisors and research folks in our community. Uh, so we go to these um, every month or so. Uh, we do, of course, now everything's online, uh, but we do a lot of meetings online with folks like Vanguard and Dimensional Fund. We do anywhere from you know an hour to two hours a day um, doing research with folks like this um, and it's a lot of fun for us but we learn a lot of things that we can share with with folks anthony once you show up uh show just the one uh last photo of the um i think it's the music house and then we'll yes oh yeah i love it yeah, so this is uh, last September, we took a great trip. Uh, we went to Amsterdam and then snuck off a few days to Berlin. Um, and this is the concert house, uh, right? Actually, we were about two blocks away from this at the Hilton. Um, and what a great area. Um, we had a chance to, to do tours in both Amsterdam and Berlin um, and see all the architecture, the different arts, the different sculptures. Um, what an awesome uh, way to, to see and experience that world. It was our first trip to Germany, um, which was really cool. Uh, but um, the Concert House has a really good YouTube channel. So if you're looking for things online, um, you can watch a couple of cool videos. They did some cool symphony orchestra things um, on their YouTube page. I'll warn you though, a lot of it's in German, but you can still enjoy the music uh, and get a good, uh, good hour or two uh, of nice uh, enjoyment out of it. A lot like what's on the friscoarts.org research page that you talked about. I watched the Plano Symphony yesterday for about an hour and a half. It was oh, delightful. Yes, super That's good. That's awesome. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, we definitely want to keep supporting our locals, but you know, globally as well, the arts community um, needs our support. So thank you so much, Mike, um, for your heart for the arts and for your support today. And I know you'll be tuning in for the rest of the show. So appreciate you. 
Um, all right, well, I'm gonna introduce our next uh, panelist. So Stephen Ross, he has been the City of Frisco's Public Art Administrator since May 2017. He oversees the city's public art program and the collection of over 80 artworks. He works with artists on all facets of the public art process and was part of the team to update the city's public art master plan. Stephen uh, holds a BA in art history from UT Austin and an MA in art history from the Courtauld Institute of Art in London. And Swad Betovich was born in Sarajevo, Bosnia and moved to the US in 1997, becoming a citizen in 2004. After 15 years in corporate America, Swad took the leap to start Swad Betovich Photography, specializing in portrait photography. Swad has become a staple in the Frisco community by offering his skills to many area nonprofits and businesses. He also teaches continuing ed photography classes at the Collin, Collin, Collin County Community College and serves on the board of directors for the Frisco Chamber of Commerce and is the communications director for the Visual Arts Guild of Frisco. Swad and Steven, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi. Hey guys. Hi Tammy. Thanks for having us. Uh, Hi Tammy. Absolutely. Hey. So what I want to do today is uncover a bit about um, your interest in the arts as children, your journey into what you're doing now, and um, some current projects, and then maybe a little peek at the future. So, um, Steve, we're going to start with you. I'm going to step back in time. Um, those of us who are in the arts, we usually have a story or a circumstance that that uh, we can remember that drew us into the arts. So can you tell us a little bit about what that was for you? Where were you? What were the circumstances? Sure. Well, thank you for including me in this. And, um, you know, when you go back that far, you kind of have to talk about where you were born. Uh, I was born in Connecticut uh, to definitely loving parents, but people who were not arts people. Um, and, but they were very supportive of my interest in the arts. And that really started when I was uh, very young and my grandmother. She was the first painter okay. I ever knew. Um, and going to her house was pretty amazing. It was the first time I ever saw art hanging on a wall. Um, and it was the first time that I really ever saw that could make something that they love to do part of their life. Uh, this is a really cute photo of me that everybody should really love. Uh, but this is at my grandmother's house. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, I, I felt like I would win this if I just submitted this photo. So anyway, <laughs> kidding, Swat. Uh, but the point is, from a very early age, I really liked art, and it's something that I wanted to do. So the grandmother was very influential. I also had an aunt who was very um, into archival work and library sciences work. Um, and she traveled the world, and she would bring back uh, art books. So uh, it's an amazing thing to think about that those books actually kindled interest in art history. And also, I'd like to say that all of us have these teachers that we need to thank. And my high school art teacher, Martha Gibson, was very influential in creating a place where we all felt welcome to art. So I'd just like to say, uh, just to wrap this part up, um, you know, if there's anybody in your life that really influenced you, you know, this is a great time to thank them. Absolutely. I know. You know, I, I loved in that photo, too, you know, the delight and the exploration and the wonder in your eyes is so apparent. Um, and it's something that I hope that a lot of families have been able to do during this time with art, uh, because, you know, if you can take that time to show or to inspire, I mean, it, it has an effect forever. So, um, so Swad, let's turn to you. Um, you were born in Bosnia. Tell us a little bit about your family and how um, you got drawn into the arts. Yeah, of course. Uh, very much like Stephen, uh, I had a family member who was in the arts and who kind of uh, brought me into that, and that was my dad. Uh, my dad was an actor. He acted in theater uh, since he was wow. 10 years old. Um, he um, actually had a celebration of uh, 60 years of theater uh, at, at one point or another. Um, so uh, during uh, when I was growing up, uh, I had the opportunity to, to go to theater quite a lot. Um, and then, of course, at uh, opening night parties, um, I would get together with, uh, with all the kids and we would run around the empty theater while the, uh, while the adults uh, were downstairs celebrating. Uh, but uh, over the course of time, I, I just had the uh, opportunity to meet a lot of, uh, a lot of artists from different disciplines, um, dancers and uh, writers and poets and, and, of course, a few photographers. Um, so that was kind of my, my introduction uh, to art um, because uh, when, when you're one type of artist, you, you also want to explore some other uh, types of art. So 
Uh, my dad was an actor, but he knew a lot about uh, classical music, a lot about uh, dance and paintings and, and a lot of other things. And then uh, he was also kind of a, a family photographer as well. Yeah, that is so amazing. The photos of your dad, I mean, he looks like um, a really like like a general somewhere, you know? It uh, must have been amazing to grow up in an environment like that with just so much theater. I mean, you were immersed in the arts. Absolutely, and you're not far off. In one of those pictures, he was actually a chief of police in uh, in uh, 18th century Bosnia. So that that's pretty close. Oh, okay. uh, and he also had he also had seasonal. Yeah, that was the one. Uh, he also had seasonal gigs as uh, a Santa Claus, which you can uh, probably oh. tell, you know, because of the, I did not inherit uh, that big uh, big bush yeah. beard. Uh, so I, I have to be clean shaven. But yeah. Um, it, right. it was it was great because uh, he he was uh, Zeus in a production of Odyssey. He was uh, he he played many um, uh, Shakespeare characters. One of the most famous mm -hmm. is uh, Prospero from The Tempest. Uh, so it was it was just great uh, to be exposed to all of that at a young age for me. That is so great, Anthony. I know we have a photo of Swad when he was a young kid. If you could throw that up there, um, it's uh, there. We go. You know we can't have Steven. Yeah, without Swad yeah. <laughs> Love of it. course. Great yeah, outfit, sense of, still best sense of style. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. So, um, Stephen, we're going to fast forward now, go to college, um, where you studied art history um, at UT Austin, and you got your MA in arts history in London. So, um, you know, we have some students who are watching and who are considering uh, studying the arts in college. Um, what made you choose that? Uh, and, um, you know, just would love to get your perspective on that. Sure. You know, I don't talk about this a lot, but I was a fair picture when I was in high school. Um, and so much so that that's what I wanted to be. Uh, and I actually was accepted to the Art Institute of Chicago, the school, um, right out of high school. And, um, you know, I didn't actually apply to any colleges except for UT. Uh, and when my father saw how much the Art Institute of Chicago was going to cost, he um, basically said there was no way. <laughs> Uh, so my, my art dream was was dashed, and you know that's a common thing to happen, you know, uh, and I think it's something you just have to move on from. And I, I really took it as a positive. Uh, I ended up at UT Austin. Um, you know, my mom worked very hard, especially to put me through that school. And the first semester I was there, uh, I was taking a class from um, Michael Ray Charles. Uh, for those of you who don't know Michael, he's a professor now in Houston, uh, but he was one of the first artists featured on Art 21, that wonderful PBS, PBS series. Uh, Michael's a very intimidating presence, and he made us draw the same chair over and over and over again. I remember thinking to myself, this is not art school, what are we doing? Uh, and it came to the critique uh, where he brought me in and he gave me a B. I wasn't used to getting Bs at that point in my life, uh, but his point was that the ability he saw in me, I wasn't demonstrating to him. All that he wanted to see. Now, being the young, stupid young man that I was, I took that as maybe I should do something else. So the next semester, I enrolled in art, enrolled in art history. Uh, but <laughs> it ended up being a good thing. Uh, I had a great experience at UT. It's a great school for art history. So look for places that you think you could feel comfortable that have great programs. That's the advice. Uh, I ended up at the Courtauld Institute in London, uh, which is one of the best schools in the world for the study of art history. Still not sure how I got in. Um, I was a 22-year-old going to London, which was amazing. Uh, I think I sent a couple of pictures took uh, during that time when I was there at the school. Uh, so this is facing the school. This is uh, used to be a, a summer palace. And on the right there, you're seeing the entrance to the Courtauld Institute. And on the left is the entrance to the Courtauld Gallery. Uh, but the next photo, I just wanted to show everybody because this is what really inspires me almost every day when I think about it. This is the entrance that I walked in to at the Courtauld Gallery. And if you see at the top, it says Royal. Uh, society and a uh, Royal Antiqui Antiquary Society. Uh, this was the entrance um, hundreds of years ago, decades and decades ago, uh, to the Royal Society, which is one of the most hallowed institutions for the study of science ever. Uh, and we got to walk through this door and have our classes in that space. Directly across, like I said, is the entrance to the gallery. That's where the Royal Academy was, which was the best art school in the world for decades and decades and decades. So uh, my sister uh, reminded me that Darwin walked through that door and then uh, the art gallery on the left, Thomas Gainsborough walked through that door. I got to go to school. Wow. Uh, it was an amazing experience and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Yes, you know, going, traveling like that um, and being 
somewhere where you are steeped in history, um, it really does change you. Uh, so what an incredible mm -hmm. experience for you. Uh, Swad, uh, you served during the war in Bosnia, but you were also an on-air personality at a local radio station. Can you tell us um, about how that came about and what you drew you into broadcast? Yeah, absolutely. I um, actually uh, started uh, playing around with uh, with radio a lot earlier than that. Uh, at, on this in this picture, I'm in kind of my early twenties, I think. Uh, but since I was about ten or eleven, um, I was a part of a children's uh, radio team. Um, so that when when uh, everybody was making uh, radio plays uh, and they need a, needed a kid's voice, they would call one of us. And then, of course, we would we would also make uh, radio plays uh, for kids. Uh, so that's kind of how early my, my love of radio started. And, and then I went through a lot of uh, different radio stations. Um, and yes, during during the war uh, in, in breaks between the action, you know, I would I would sit behind the mic microphone and uh, uh, play a few tunes and, and talk to some people. Uh, that was that was kind of uh, uh, my way of, uh, uh, of kind of staying sane in that uh, particular situation. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, you know, you definitely do have a radio voice. It wasn't something that um, I recognized until I saw the photo. I'm like, yeah, you know what, he does. So I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if you got back into that <laughs> later on. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe a podcast or something, right? Yeah, exactly. For sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, all right, Stephen, we're going to come back to you. So, um, so you, you know, you finished your work um, studying and now you're back in Dallas in the Dallas art scene and you were serving on the public art committee there. You taught an undergrad course at SMU and very involved at the Nasher Sculpture Center um, before coming to Frisco. So can you tell us a little bit about the work that you were doing at the Nasher? Sure. So I was lucky to come back to this area when the National Sculpture Center was opening. Um, and it really it was in its first year. Sort of work. And I was lucky enough to become part of the team that built the education program there. Um, so I became eventually the curator of education and I managed all programs from kids uh, to adults. Uh, I worked on partnerships and maintaining partnerships around the city with other arts organizations. Um, obviously leading a docent program so that we could do tours. Uh, it was an amazing experience, uh, but also just getting to know the Nash family, Raymond Nasher, Nancy Nash's daughter, uh, who are incredible collectors and patrons of the arts. Uh, if you've been to North Park in Dallas, that's a place where you can see incredible art. Uh, it's one of those things where it's an opportunity that I've sort of felt like I'm very proud of, uh, and it's something that I would, would, would never trade for anything. The picture you're seeing there is uh, one of the first uh, modern sculptures, contemporary sculptures, to be in North Park. This is 1972. Oh, wonderful. Wow. Um, I also was in charge of, you know, giving a lot of the VIP tours. Well, really, most of the tours and speaking to most of the groups that came through, corporate groups and nonprofits. Um, so it was an opportunity to really uh, educate uh, often, and it's something that I really do actually kind of miss. It's the thing I want to do more of in my current position. And then lastly, uh, I left, and uh, the director who's still there is Jeremy Strick, likes to joke that I left on a Friday to work on something called Nasher Exchange. Um, this was the 10th anniversary of the museum, and it was an opportunity for us to give back to the community by creating the first museum curated city. So I worked with 10 different artists on programs around the city, and we all had, they all had partners. So what you're looking at here on Calder Street, uh, which is a, a unique uh, coincidence, I think. Uh, it is a project we did with Habitat for Humanity with Lara Amar Segui. Uh, she's an artist who's interested in forgotten spaces, spaces that people don't really think of. Uh, she's also interested in the materials we use to build things. So Habitat for Humanity had been building this neighborhood up and uh, we got permission from them and through a heavy permitting system in the city of Dallas uh, to bulldoze the house because it was going to be a knockdown anyway to build a new house on the space. Uh, and Lara wanted to bury it. So what you're looking there in this photo actually is the house underneath the ground there. I think it's a beautiful wow. statement about the memories that happened in that area and a beautiful statement about what artists can do with materials. Uh, also really a pleasure to work with Rick Lowe. Um, Project Row Houses in Houston is something everybody should look into. It's one of the greatest social art experiments and well, successes, I shouldn't even say an experiment. Long running way to revitalize a neighborhood. Uh, he did something in the Vickery Meadow neighborhood of Dallas with us, which I think was groundbreaking. And here's a great picture of me with the curator of the Nasher, Jed Morris. 
Rainbow piece that went over at the Trinity River Audubon Center uh, in Dallas, which you, if you haven't been, it's beautiful. This was Ruben's first public art piece, uh, and he was a real delight to work with. He works with materials that are normally not creating art. Here, you're looking at those concrete posts that signs are usually made from, and he created this beautiful field of, of what look like flowers. So really a uh, pretty amazing wow. experience. I to tell people about it if they have time. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know what, Stephen, it also sounds like you have a teacher's heart um, because you enjoy, you know, learning from the sculptors and the artists, but then also sharing that with others. Would you say that's true? Right. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, the thing is that when you become a museum educator and you asked earlier about, you know, students, especially what they're looking for in their career, um, you know, art school, you go to art history school, you need to figure out what you're going to do with that, right? Now you can become an academic if you want. Uh, you can become a working artist, uh, but working in museums and galleries, and especially museums and education, is something that's an incredible experience because you're the front line for communicating about what things are. Uh, and right. really, that challenge of, I don't know if I really can be part of this, that, that students often have in museums, I love working that with education. Mm, I love that. Well, and I think, you know, I said this before, you know, the more you know about a piece of art or music or the ballet, the more you appreciate it. So you're really Absolutely. helping to cultivate, uh, you know, the next generation of arts uh, patrons. So thank you for, for all of that. Um, Swad, um, going back to your story. So uh, you moved to the, new, to the U.S. and um, then you did a lot of traveling and started taking photos of uh, the beautiful natural landscapes here. So um, I know you submitted a, a bunch of beautiful photos that we can put those on the screen. Tell us a little bit about the places you traveled and where some of these are from. Yeah, I, uh, I was lucky enough to, uh, to uh, meet a couple of guys who were also uh, sharing my, uh, my interest in photography, especially landscape photography, national parks, public lands and all of that, uh, which, uh, which are generally uh, in the western part of the country. Although this first picture uh, is actually uh, from Chicago, which uh, you will appreciate, Tammy. Uh, it is. I know. I it is that. from. Uh, yeah, it is from the top of the uh, Hancock Observatory, looking kind of straight down oh, uh, after yes. uh, after the sun had set. So you can kind of see the the uh, streets and the cars stopped at the at the light and all that. So that was kind of a uh, that was kind of interesting. But um, most of uh, most of my travel, like I said, was uh, through Arizona, uh, which is where this is. Uh, this is one of the Antelope Canyons uh, in northern Arizona, right around the city of Page. Uh, if you're looking for it. And those are just uh, slot canyons with that water has created over thousands and hundreds of thousands of years. Uh, and so now we're able to, to walk through and admire uh, these wonderful works of art uh, created by nature. And so as a nature and landscape photographer, uh, your, your task is to kind of capture uh, that beauty. This is in uh, Bryce Canyon uh, National Park uh, in Utah, so not far away. Uh, I think both of these pictures were taken on the same trip. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you have to uh, walk out, especially this time of year, and, and take a, a couple of pictures of uh, good old Texas blue bonnets. So, yeah, I, I try to, I try to uh, find beauty wherever I go, and uh, uh, especially in some of these places where uh, you, you can't really take a bad picture. You, you just have to point the mm. camera and, and something amazing happens. Uh, I was fortunate enough to, uh, to go to see quite a lot of them. This picture in particular is in Croatia, not far uh, from where I was born in the city of uh, Dubrovnik, actually, uh, which is a coastal town uh, that's been around for many hundreds of years. Uh, it's been an independent republic back in the, uh, in the dark ages. Uh, and um, that is the place where, where I would most often go uh, on summer vacation while I was growing up in Bosnia. So this was taken on one of the later trips uh, that I came back and, uh, and took some photos um, of, uh, of, of the incredible city walls and fortresses that are there in that, uh, in that town. So uh, that, that was one of the things that I found there. And then, of course, uh, one of my favorite trips uh, was to Yosemite uh, National Park. This was uh, on one of the trails. Uh, the uh, waterfall in the background is the uh, Yosemite uh, Falls, which I think is the tallest uh, year-round waterfall in North America. Uh, I, I think wow. I, I'm, I'm right about that. Uh, it, it's, a, it's an absolutely incredible place. This is also in, in Yosemite. Uh, so if you have any chance to, to go, uh, especially now if, uh, if the uh, national parks and parks in general uh, became open, 
it, it's a fantastic place to go. It's pretty busy during the summer. It's, it's actually the, the most visited uh, park uh, in, in the national park system. Uh, but Yosemite is absolutely worth your time. It, it is amazing. Book at least three or four days there uh, to see as much as you can and, and hike uh, some of those trails that are, that are there. Yes, definitely. Um, I was so amazed when I went to Yosemite too. I mean, just there is so much beauty that surrounds you, but the canyon pictures that you took with the colors, mm -hmm. I mean, are those are just naturally there, right? Those purple hues, the pink hues. You didn't have to uh, put a filter on that. <laughs> no, uh, there's no there's no filter, but uh, it, it's important to realize that, that photography is uh, is writing with art, right? That's the literal translation from mm -hmm. Greek, uh, 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 writing with light. I'm sorry, uh, but it, it also involves a little bit of trickery. So yes, those those blues and purples don't actually exist. Uh, all of this stone is, is kind of this reddish, orangish uh, hue, but as the light gets further down into the canyon. It kind of bounces off the walls and cools off, and, and it, it uh, actually acquires a different color. So those uh, those parts toward the top, uh, they they show that true red and orange color. But as you go further uh, below, you start seeing some of those blues and purples that actually are not there. It's just kind of how how light works. I love what you said. You said photography is writing with light. I had never heard that before. So I'm going to keep that in yeah. my brain. I love it. Photo, um, photo is light and then graphos is, is writing. So yes. photography is writing with light. Latin. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, no, no, I love that. So um, Stephen, we'll come back to you now in your current position as the public art administrator. Um, you know, what's really cool about Frisco that I learned when I was on the public art board was that really all of us as citizens in Frisco are um, art collectors uh, because of the city's commitment to um, you know, have that or ordinance of 1% towards public art. So um, can you describe a little bit about that and the uniqueness of the city's art collection? Sure, uh, I just wanna say, I, I, I am sad that I missed you uh, because uh, you know, as soon as I started, you were gone from the yeah. But, um, <laughs> no, you, had you I know, known, I would have stayed. So, oh, okay, thank you. All right. Um, so the city of Frisco has had a public art collection since uh, 2002. It was established, or a pub program, I would say, since 2002. It was established through ordinance, uh, and it's a percent for our program, like you said. A percentage of capital improvement projects is set aside uh, for the creation of public art. Uh, 2002 is very early to have a program like that, and it really shows that the city of Frisco wanted to make sure that they were creating the arts infrastructure of their city while they were building it. Um, so there are over 80 artworks in the collection. You're seeing some of them up here on the screen here. Um, artists that are known all over the world, artists that have been chosen by the state of Texas to represent the state for arts. Uh, we are very lucky to have what we have in this city. Um, so I also uh, oversee the master plan, as you said in the beginning. Uh, we read the master plan in 2018. It was originally written in 2004. It's a great document if you want to see what we do with public art in Frisco and what we plan on doing. Um, I'm also happy that I get to work with the public art board. These are seven residents of Frisco who work very hard to do that you are getting uh, top quality art in these uh, capital improvement projects. And so what I do all day long is I, I work with artists on the contracting process, the permitting process, uh, working on design, relation. Uh, it's a process that I highly recommend artists who are interested in getting public art learning more about. And I'm here to say that if you are an artist listening and you want to learn more about how public art is done, uh, give me a call or you can do it. That's why I'm here. Uh, the point is, it's a little bit more involved than doing studio work, um, and it's something that can be really intimidating. But the point of a public art administrator, a manager, a coordinator, they're here to help you with that process. And uh, later we'll talk about some projects that are coming up. Yes, definitely. Now, there's so much um, that is entailed. I only got to see uh, one installation when I was uh, part of the public art board, uh, but it was incredible to me, you know, especially as a musician, because I'm not as familiar with the visual art side of it. But um, mm -hmm. how much is behind the scenes? The, you see a sculpture and you think, oh, it just showed up like that, you know, in one piece. But there is so much behind it. So I'm looking forward. To <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, Swad, uh, back to you. Um, you made the decision after 15 years in the corporate world to uh, jump off and, and start your own business um, as Swad Betovich Photography. So, um, 
I know that there's probably a lot of folks watching that even especially after these six weeks of being at home, um, that they're considering, you know, maybe I need to go do my own thing versus staying in the corporate world. Can you tell us um, what made you make that decision uh, and, and then a little bit more about your business? Uh, sure, of course. Uh, one thing that I would recommend is uh, start as early as you can, but uh, you don't have to necessarily leave the job you have. You can kind of do it uh, as I had been doing uh, while I was taking all these pictures that we just saw. Um, I was working uh, in, a, in a corporate America kind of a job uh, and took my vacations to, to those places uh, on purpose, just with, with the purpose of taking photos um, and, uh, and kind of building that fine art portfolio. Uh, and not only that, but just building the skills that you that you need for a photography business. So uh, learn how to familiarize yourself with your camera, how the camera operates. So you don't have to look for uh, different settings. You just kind of know where they are at all times. So you don't have to even think about that so that, that the camera becomes an extension of you and not uh, something that, that you have to figure out every time you, uh, you, you want to take a picture. And things like that only come with practice. So practice 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 of course uh, 10,000 hours of practice uh, is required for, for mastery of any uh, of any skill uh, as we know uh, so take pictures of, of people who are in your home uh, and uh, or, or take pictures of, of your surroundings or your neighborhoods um, and and you'll see an extension of, of a project like that that uh, uh, that are shown uh, they're being shown right now I, I have a project that I've been taking uh, photos of uh, friends that I see around Frisco uh, with my black and white film camera. So uh, not only is it a film camera, but it's black and white. So it's, it's just kind of like a, a nostalgic look at, at kind of how things uh, used to be and how we used to take pictures. Uh, but uh, now with, with, a, you know, with a special twist, these are all special people to me. And we would get together, have coffee or lunch or something like that. And then I would say, hey, do you mind if I take a photo of you for my project? And then uh, once all the photos have been um, developed and, and printed, then I would I would actually give them the print uh, so that they can have that. It's it's like a swag victims original, if you will. Uh, on my end, it kind of uh, taught me how to uh, see light, how to compose, uh, and because it's film, you don't have that many options. Uh, everybody gets only one shot, so you kind of have to think about that. You have to uh, slow down a little bit and um, and be be much more deliberate about how you take the picture uh, compared to what you would do with a digital uh, camera. So uh, all of these people, like I said, are, are, are very special to me and, and we would all kind of get together and get relaxed and, and just kind of chat. And from, uh, from those situations, uh, all, of these, uh, all of these photos are, are, are made. Yes, um, well, and I know you have done a lot of event photography for us um, at Frisco Arts. Uh, which has been just so wonderful because you are able to capture uh, these moments that we're, you know, gathering the membership, like uh, with our um, Arts Impact um, event. And so, yeah, we're looking through some of these. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, a lot of times people think, especially in our Instagram age, uh, if you don't capture the photo, it never happened. <laughs> so, right, exactly. It is really important that you do have a photographer at your events because um, these moments are in passing and now you have a record and it's a, a bit historical as well. Um, there's an element of that. Yeah, I absolutely agree uh, because uh, these events, people spend a lot of time and energy uh, putting these events together. Uh, and I mean, you know that better than anyone, Tammy, because uh, Frisco Arts mm -hmm. uh, events are always amazing and, and bring a large audience. But then you want to capture that moment. And it can't be just, you know, one of the volunteers who also has five or ten other jobs and duties throughout the evening. It has to be a dedicated right. person uh, who, who has a camera and, and his one job throughout the evening is to capture all of these moments that you're going to be using later either to promote uh, the events for next year or, or whatever the next event is or, or all of these people that are in these pictures, they're going to want to tag themselves on, on Facebook and show them uh, to their friends and say, hey, look how much uh, how much fun I had at the latest Frisco Arts event. Um, and I, of course, uh, do other events, not just uh, nonprofit events, but corporate events that are similar in type. And, and it's for that same purpose so that, that people can kind of see the energy of the place. 
uh, and and kind of showed that to uh, to whoever they're working with. And then of course um, I uh, I collaborate with with a lot of uh, other people in, and and entities here in Frisco with Lifestyle Frisco, uh, the online uh, media platform. So uh, I do a lot of photos for them uh, with the Frisco Chamber of Commerce, with the Visual Arts Guild of Frisco. Uh, so I I enjoy uh, helping. Uh, develop that community of artists and, and not only that but kind of showing everybody what Frisco is all about how much fun we have here how uh, how we bring people together uh, for various purposes and uh, I just love that about Frisco now we didn't get to see some of your um, your uh, portrait photography but I kind of want to hear from you and this is a question I'll ask Stephen too is you know why is photography or the arts so important? Um, why is capturing these images and, and some of the stuff that you did during COVID-19, even the photography at that time, uh, during this time, why is it important? Well, uh, art is important in general. Uh, it's, it's kind of what, uh, what gives purpose to, to the rest of it. We are, uh, we're not here you know, just to go shopping or, or to, to pay our bills or go to work. Uh, we also have some kind of have to have some kind of an enrichment in our lives, and that's that's where the art came in. Uh, and uh, I think uh, early on in the um, in the event, you you had a, a page from FriscoArts.org uh, where with that quote that if, if you do, if you don't like artists, then uh, try to get through quarantine without uh, writers and uh, actors and uh, painters and photographers and videographers and all of these artists that are creating this content. Uh, that we're binge watching on Netflix or scrolling through on our social media. So art is is an essential part uh, of our uh, of our lives, and uh, what what uh, what people like Stephen uh, are doing is making art uh, an essential part of our community and our environment. So you can go uh, down the street and uh, and see some public art and be intrigued with it, be inspired with it, um, to do something uh, of your own. So I, I think. Um, the the art kind of make uh, make life have uh, some kind of a purpose, uh, whether we're we're consuming the art or or we we're creating it. So without art or artists, um, it it would be a much lesser world, uh, in my opinion. Yes, I absolutely agree, and I think you know that's one of the reasons we put that um, quote on the resources page too, is because we want people to be aware as advocates that um, you have been surviving this time because of artists and that we have to include our artists and our arts organizations and folks that are creating in this recovery process um, because mm -hmm. they have been part of the sustainability process. So um, I appreciate that. Anthony, why don't you um, show us the photos through the um, installation process of that? Do you see, go through that file? Um, mm -hmm. These were submitted by Stephen because he, of course, oversees all of the um, installation of every single, uh, since he's been here, uh, of the commissioned works. And um, we have, I love the one especially um, of Surf Dog. Let's pull up that file. You know, sculpture specifically, it's so difficult. I don't know too many sculpture artists. Um, personally, I have met a few from the Texas Sculpture yeah. Garden. Um, this one is at the Rough Range Dog Park that is very unique to Frisco. Um, so you just can go th over there by FM, what is that? It's like Stonebrook and Lebanon in between there. Uh, it's a really, really cool uh, sculpture. And I Fourth, think Fourth Army Road, is it? Fourth Army, that's right, yeah. And I think on Stephen's table, he has a mini surf dog. Um, yeah, I think we he, saw it in the, in the background yeah. <laughs> uh, when, when he was on screen. Yes. But it's truly incredible, um, you know, the size and the scope of these projects and the fact that every citizen in Frisco, um, you know, this is part of your collection. You are an art collector of 80 different, 80 plus different works in Frisco. And you can find out more information about every one of these beautiful um, pieces on the, the Frisco Texas.gov website. This one is called, I believe it's called Dreaming, and that's a, a smaller replication of um of that one so so yeah definitely check out the website um yeah this is the city's website and you can check out the entire public art collection um and the other thing too uh you know the play frisco 
brand is um, is just a really great way of uh, capturing the artistic creativity and the talent within our city. And so there's a new Instagram page for them. Um, Swan, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Play for Sco and their Instagram? Uh, yeah, they just started that uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, put out a call to artists uh, to, uh, I, I think the, the, the theme of the show was animals. So a lot of uh, artists mm -hmm. uh, just put together uh, some uh, photos of animals and they, they've been posting them uh, on, uh, on a daily or, or uh, regular uh, basis. And uh, it, it's just kind of like a, another way to showcase uh, the local artist. Uh, so you know, one thing that I would recommend if you're, especially if you're a visual artist, you know, Instagram is kind of a, a medium that, that's made for that. Uh, so connect with, with Frisco Art Gallery, you see their handle right there. Um, but there are also, uh, there are also other uh, avenues for artists to, to show their work, even in this time when, when we can't gather uh, for receptions and galleries. Uh, we have our friends at Gallery 8680. Uh, we're going to have a, a virtual uh, art show in May. And then, of course, uh, my friends from uh, Visual Arts Guild of Frisco are preparing their annual show called Art Rages. Uh, which will be uh, virtual as well uh, during the month of June. So just connect with, with organizations that are around town and uh, look for those calls for artists. Um, and yes, uh, let, let me not forget the art in the atrium, but uh, I'd love for Stephen to talk more about that. Yes, Stephen, are you back now? I think so. I'm really sorry. It just keeps going in and That's out, okay. but I'll, I'll talk as long as I can. Uh, so Art in the Atrium is a program the city has been doing since 2006. Uh, and we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of artists since that time. And, uh, you know, it's something the Public Art Board really looks forward to. They actually choose the artworks that are in the show. Um, you know, I think they do a great job uh, being the curators of this wonderful experience that encompasses usually uh, up to 30 cities in the area, uh, artists representing 30 cities in the area, which is amazing. Um, some of these artists have been in the show since the very beginning. Some of them are new each time, which is, I think, very inspiring. Um, so Vision 2020, which is the one that should be going up soon, uh, is temporarily um, postponed because of uh, the pandemic situation. But we will get back to that and announce the artists that are involved in that. If you're interested in being in any of these exhibitions, um, just uh, email me because we have two a year. Next one will be in the fall. Wonderful. And we were speculating, is, um, is Surf Dog behind you there on your table? Yeah, that's the maquette that Jeffy Brewer <laughs> made for uh, the, the, the public art board to, to see uh, what the sculpture would look like. You, you know, that's a great, great piece over at Rough Range Dog Park. I highly recommend you going to see it. Uh, Jeffy is an artist who loves very funny, very intelligent. He grew up in a junkyard in East Texas, and he says he learned how to put things together, to weld metal together there in that experience uh, in the junkyard that his parents owned. Uh, it's a wonderful wow. picture of him actually welding the piece uh, every inch of that sculpture was created by the artist, uh, hand-painted by the artist. Um, he's an artist that I really think that a lot of people should know more about. He taught for many years at Stephen F. Austin. Um, and uh, please do go check out his website if you can. Um, and now that we have you back, can you talk a little bit about Chipmunks and Cheetos? First of all, I love that name. Sure, sure. And David well, that's my favorite. <laughs> that's my favorite artwork in the collection. People ask me that often. It's also the smallest artwork in the collection. Um, David Isles is a Texas artist known for creating sculptures of Texas wildlife. And so uh, what, what you're seeing here is really cast um, Cheetos, real Cheetos that he cast. Uh, and it's actually wow. only about 11 inches off the ground. And everything was hand sculpted by him. Wonderful David installing it. I will say that we did remove this temporarily because David is actually welding some spots back together that have come undone over the years. So we'll be back and it's gonna be located or is located in Hummingbird Park. Uh, David has wonderful pieces, as you're seeing here, over at the um, Hall Arts uh, as well. Um, so amazing pieces and representations for David in the area. Highly recommend you looking them up if you can. Yes. I wonder if people were thinking they were real Cheetos and they were trying to tear it apart. Who knows? <laughs> they look <Yeah>. so good. <laughs> well, for, for, I think, as you know, for a long time, they were white because all the paint had rubbed off. So they're orange again. When, when they're installed, they will be orange again. Well, um, I love just hearing about the, the stories behind these. And, you know, if there's ever a time where you do a lecture or something and you want to tell um, about all of the different stories behind the artworks, I, you know, I'd definitely be there. And I'm sure we could get a bunch of folks to listen in because yeah. that's, you know, it, it just helps you appreciate it. 
Yeah. Um, so I, I did ask this, well, this question. Um, well, good, because I'm going to count on you to do that then. <laughs> Okay. Um, I did ask Swad about, you know, the importance of photography and art, but I did want to ask you as well, um, why public art? Why is art important in your perspective? Well, public art, the reason I love it so much is because it's publicly accessible. I mean, I know that sounds, it's in the name, but the idea is it is created in the places that we live and work. Uh, it is in your neighborhoods. You may not even know it. It's in some parks in your neighborhood. Uh, and the idea is during a time, especially like this, these things are things that you can go see. It effectively turns your city, your community into a museum. Uh, that's the beauty of public art. Uh, it is something that you don't have to pay for. It's something that is accessible to everyone. And hopefully people have a sense of ownership for, uh, especially the ones that they live next to. Uh, and I think that's a beautiful thing. And if you're interested, you can go to the city's website. Uh, we just updated a lot of the photos and descriptions of the pieces in the collection. Uh, this is the page here. If you scroll down, there is actually a link um, where you can open up a slideshow of images so you can see about four pieces in the collection. Very cool. Um, yes, no, I think it's wonderful. It's one of the one of the things I really do love about our city. So um, wrapping up, now that we've kind of taken a journey of your lives from childhood all the way through, um, I want to ask a question that's a little more personal of each of you. So, Swab, we'll start with you. Um, what would your current self tell your younger self and why? <laughs> um, it would probably have to be uh, to not be afraid to start early. Uh, we all mm. kind of have, uh, as, as artists, we always have doubts uh, about our work or our abilities. Um, and uh, we, we just need to give ourselves a little bit more credit and, and trust in, in ourselves a little bit more uh, and get started uh, even when it doesn't uh, sound like it would be a good idea. Um, because the earlier you start, the more enriched your life will art, with art will be. Uh, so I think um, especially if, you're, if somebody is, is thinking about uh, starting a business in the, in the world of art, uh, whether it's uh, photography or, or painting or anything else, or music especially, uh, you know, start early, you know, do what you can to practice as much as, as you can, learn your craft uh, to the maximum uh, level uh, available to you, and uh, all of the other pieces will, will eventually fall uh, into place as, as long as you put in the work. Yes, I love that. Start early. Uh, yes. Stephen, how about you? What would your current self tell your younger self and why? Sure. You know, I've been lucky to meet a lot of really great artists, and I used to tell this story a lot. I haven't in a while, but um, in my younger years, there was an artist that I was at a reception with. He's an internationally known artist. He's somebody who you would probably know. And, uh, you know, he, we were standing in front of artwork, and we were talking about an artist admired as a student. Uh, so this was years before, and he was talking about how excited he got looking at those artworks, and how excited he got going to those, those exhibitions and reading those books. And then he turned away uh, and he said very solemnly, um, I haven't felt like that in years. And it struck me at the time, even me, that that was pretty dark, you know? And it reminded me, and, it, and I think about this story every time I get down a little bit, that we do have to find inspiration every day. And so that's something I would tell my younger self. So for example, shameless blog, go look at the Frisco Public Art Collection if you're interested. Uh, go look up the Cortell Gallery uh, on YouTube. There's a wonderful um, tour with Bill Nye, the actor. Uh, of those galleries if you want to see what that's like or you know just uh, really you know get out there and find something new that you've never experienced before in the arts uh, it does a wonders for your mind yes absolutely and i think you know it's um I, mean, I truly believe that all of us are born to be creative and that you know um inspiring that creativity and, and tapping into that individually is good for us um, but it's also good for the collective whole. So I love that message that, you know, we need to definitely um, find inspiration every day. So thank you both for being our guest today on Smart Men. You guys are smart men <laughs> in the arts, also in business, in informing our public. So um, appreciate you guys for your time. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. 
And um, thank you all for joining us today for this um, edition of Smart Men. I really loved getting to know both SWAT and Steven better, and I hope you did as well. Um, you can reach out to them anytime to, you know, if you need someone for photography purposes or to look and find the art that is in our city all around us. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Frisco Arts, um, arts advocacy, you can go to our website at friscoarts.org. Um, you can also become a member or donate and help support our efforts to keep the arts in the conversation. So um, we look forward to seeing you again um, next Tuesday for Ladies Who Launch. We will also have some other events coming up. Just subscribe to our newsletter. It's free on our website. So thank you all for joining us and be careful as you go back out. Um, and until next time, make sure you find inspiration every day. Stolen from Stephen Ross. Thanks. Bye.